right, so we have had kind of a, I don't know, convoluted week. We got the solar arch up, but it took us a couple days to get that completely on and finalized. We started running the wires and it's just taken us a long time to really get there. And now we still have a couple wires we need to run. So I'm hoping to finish up the wiring for the solar arch today. The snow is starting to melt away. The boat is just like super wet and dirty. So I'm gonna have to clean up a bit. I'm feeling optimistic that we're gonna actually kind of finish this project today. <sighs> There's gotta be an easier way to do this. It's one of those things where I really go back and forth on whether this is a good idea or not. The whole thing. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. I'm Desiree and this is my husband, Jordan. We're sailing around the world, or at least trying to. We made it as far as Panama on our first boat, Atticus 1, which was a really small fixer upper. Now we're on our dream sailboat, Atticus 2, but she needs some work before she's ready to cross oceans. So we're working hard to finish up the last of our boat projects so we can sail south to the Caribbean. Okay. So this is the new stern light wire. We had to put in an extension of wire through the arch because the old stern light wire just wasn't gonna be long enough. So this is the wire that's leading to the new stern light. This is the old stern light wire. So this wire going that way leads to the circuit panel. So I just need to connect these more or less right here. So I think it's finally time that I kind of express to you guys that I have a patch. And this is this is Mr. Patch. I want to introduce you guys to Mr. Patch. Mr. Patch and I don't get along very well. I'm talking to a doctor about it. From all the research I've done, it's really not a big deal. It looks like it's just something that happens to some very unfortunate individuals. It's something I'm insecure about. I kind of wish I just was like balding normally. That would be totally acceptable to me. But like side patch, God, that's not what you want. You know what I mean? But anyway, so there you go, meet Sad Patch. That's the one bummer about working in spaces like this is you never have everything that you need. So you gotta go in and out and in and out and in and out. So one tricky thing that I'm dealing with here is the fact that the old wire that's coming from the circuit breaker is larger than the new wire that I've got running to the stern light. To butt splice a larger wire to a smaller wire, I could use like a step down butt splice, but I don't have any of those. So I'm just gonna cut the new wire and I'm gonna expose the new wire a little bit longer than the portion that I would of the old wire. And I'm gonna double the new wire over on itself so that it'll fit into the new butt splice. All right, so the next step is we need to actually run the wires that are going to go from the solar panels all the way in here to the solar charge controllers, which are in this cabinet up here. And then from the charge controllers, we're gonna have wires running to the charge bus that actually charges the battery and that is beneath me here. Most of the wires that run forward and aft through the boat go through a wire conduit that's inside of the hull to deck joint cavity. So the plan is, is I'm gonna open up this kind of electrical and navigation panel here and we're going to run a fish stick, which is like basically a fiberglass pole that you can assemble and make into a really long length. And we're just gonna push it up into that conduit or hold a deck joint cavity and push it all the way back until it reaches the cockpit locker back there. <laughs> I don't know like how I'm making it. I'm just like pushing through whatever it is. <laughs> oh, mother oh my God, I just stabbed my finger into like a screw. Okay, yeah, no, that's plenty, I got it. Once that stick is pushed all the way through, then we're going to tie a string to the other end. Okay, go ahead and pull that. Yay. Nice. Did it. And then we'll be able to tape the wire to the string and then pull the string until the wire comes all the way through. Uh-oh, yeah, it disconnected. 
Well, we just broke that orange little string, which is this stuff. And it is really small, so it can like chafe through pretty easily when it rubs on stuff. Luckily, we did get the wire all the way to right here. So I think all we need to do now is run that fish stick through again to here. And then I think what we'll do is we'll just connect this really thick Dacron line to the stick, pull that back through, and then I'll be able to tape this thicker string or Dacron line to the wire and pull it the rest of the way. Okay, now we've got a heavy duty string running to where the wires got stuck last time. Hopefully pulling this through with the wire should do the trick. Okay, so this right here is as far as the wire made it last time. Great, okay, that's one wire down. I think we got two more to go, so keep pulling on wires. All right, so next thing is we're gonna try to fish the NEMA cable through the solar arch. So basically right here is where we've positioned and drilled the hole for the GPS antenna. And so we need to get an NMEA cable to go through here, take a hard turn there, follow this to here, and then take a hard turn there all the way down to the Foot. Last week when we tried to do that, we were able to fish most of the wires through using the string that they had already kind of put in place. But the string for the NEMA wire broke as we were pulling it. Oh, nope. It broke like right here. So we're going to try to run a new string. And the way we're going to do that is to use a vacuum, put the vacuum nozzle up against the exit hole that we want the string to go through. And then where the string starts at the top, we're gonna tie a little piece of plastic to the string and the plastic will get sucked through the tubing, making all those complicated curves and turns and the string will follow. And then that way we'll have a string making the exact run that we want the wire to do. We can connect the wire to that and then pull the wire through. We're gonna use this bubble wrap to clog up all the other exits or holes that the other wires are running through into the boat. Okay, so what's the problem, bud? The bottom of that hole is in the hull to deck joint cavity. So there's like two walls like this. And this nozzle needs to get up in there, but that cavity is not wide enough to allow this wide part of the nozzle. We just have to extend this, really. All right, so Desiree had the great idea of using butyl tape. All right, now if that doesn't make a seal, I don't know what will. Go back in. Going in again. You're in the wrong spot. You're looking great. You're looking great, but you gotta move, buddy. I need to get myself into a position where I'm more comfortable. Anything, bud? I mean, do you think we're getting close? Yes, we know. We're just getting hung up somewhere. We're talking about now maybe trying to have a vacuum up here and then see if for some reason it doesn't have the same issue. I mean, who knows? I feel like I'm constantly in like weird positions with this project. It didn't do it at all. It's getting hung up somewhere. I got that stick on it so we can actually get it started. At that point, we could almost go back to doing it the other way, vacuum down there, and then once you think it's there, like get a stick up and see if we can stir it up. I mean, should we use your camera? to see if it's there. Yeah, so it's definitely not at this last junction. I can tell that. So basically, this is the RG58 cable that's already run all the way down there. This is where we want the NME cable to come out of. And so all we did was run a little bit of string from here to the actual wire itself. And so when that pulls through, we're gonna pull with it the NMEA cable, and then it'll pull this string with it also. So that once the NMEA cable is through, then we can use this string to pull the RG58 cable back. And I'm just gonna pull this cable through. Okay, I'm pulling. Yeah, you wanna kinda like pull back and forth just a little. So what happened, Beth? Yeah, so we were able to pull it all through. So this is the one that was going through. This is the N2K. This is the first string that we pulled through. And that first string we just used to pull through like this thicker string. So now we're going to reconnect this RG58 cable to the thicker string. And I, I'm feeling really good about it. All right, well, I'm gonna get in position, get my plumbers crack out. Nice. I think we made around that first turn. All right. 
right, I think that's it. We got it. Woo! Nice one, Marvin. Yeah. What do you say, Marvin? That took us like 25 minutes? Maybe, maybe 15. Yeah, probably more like 15. All right, it is a new day. The snow is starting to melt. Everything is muddy and dirty now, so the fun part of the snow is over. <laughs> I'm not gonna continue where I left off yesterday doing the interior wiring for the solar panels because it looks like they're calling for a lot of rain. So I kinda wanna reserve inside projects for Friday. There's one last thing I can do outside for the wiring for the solar panels, and that is to connect the MC4 connectors to the electrical wires that we ran up and into the solar arch. You may remember that in the past when I did the solar panels on Atticus 1, I didn't actually have the correct crimping tool. I just used pliers to crimp the metal parts onto the wires. This time around I went ahead and got the actual crimping tools so that I can do it the right way which is kind of what I'm trying to do on this boat and that should make the project a lot smoother. Well, I am going to switch gears again because I'm gonna try to remove the rest of the chain plates that I haven't had a chance to remove yet. So I removed successfully those outboard chain plates, but now I've got to remove the inboard chain plates. So the chain plates for the lower shrouds. These nuts not being glassed in or behind any cabinetry or anything is gonna make this part of the chain plate removal process a whole lot easier. Time to just hit things with a hammer. I just can't get the right angle with the hammer. I think I'm gonna go up top and see if I can't kind of pry them out from the deck. Oh man, that came up easy. ridiculous. There's got to be an easier way to do this. <sighs> now I'm having second thoughts about this stupid project. <laughs> are taking the morning off today and we are over here <laughs> and we are here at one of our favorite restaurants in downtown Washington. It's called Down on Main. We are gonna learn how to make shrimp and grits. It is one of the most iconic southern dishes that there is and so let's check it out. And what's special about your grits here? So our grits are done completely different than everybody else's shrimp and grits. We just wanted to throw our own flair on everything. Anything special about these is just the base? They're just the Quaker grits. So okay. this is just the grits and then the special seasonings blend which you guys have. Correct. Do you sell your special sauce anywhere? No. no. We do not. What if someone gets you real good and drunk? No. No? No. <laughs> and that could happen on occasion. From here what we're going to do is we're going to add some cheese. If you want to reach sure. right in there. Yeah. yeah go ahead and yeah. put a big even yeah. handful. Easily. And then we're gonna go right back to stir it again. And see how these things are starting to pop. Yeah, it's getting really thick and like harder to stir now. If this gets difficult, okay. you're gonna to want to pour this into this pan. Ooh. You might have to do it a couple times to get the consistency right. Feeling pretty strong. Our grit game strong. <laughs> From here, it's like I'll just kind of take a Ooh. and kind of just smooth them out a little bit so that way we get them all the way consistent. Kind of like doing a icing on a cake. Yeah, you that's know, so just, visually satisfying. We'll let that cool for a few minutes on, gotcha. just on the counter to kind of go ahead and get it so it turns into this consistency gotcha. right here. So once you cut the grits, uh -huh. and how we do that is we go center, center, center. Okay. So then from there, you're going to put some breadcrumbs right here on this pan. Is that good? That's pretty right. good, yeah. So then we're going to take egg wash and we're going to put egg wash in this pan. Yeah, go ahead and get a good layer in the bottom so that way we'll get a good coverage of the grit and everything. All right, so basically it's just kind of like serving a cake. So you're going to dip right in, just get a square of grits out. Okay. You'll go right to the egg wash. Okay, just dump it in there. 
Yeah, just drop it in there and kind of toss it around a little bit and get it good and coated. So from there, we're gonna take it from there and put it right in the breadcrumbs and we're gonna kind of put breadcrumbs all over. Get it encapsulated so when it goes into the fryer from the steak, give it a nice, good, crispy brown texture. We try to get everything to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. They'll come out like really crispy brown. It's gonna be completely different. Like I said, it's not gonna be the traditional style strip and grits. Everything in the South is fried. Bacon and shrimp, yes please. I like to hit mine with a little seasoning beforehand. And I'm, I'm heavy handed on seasoning, I like spice. And that's your secret seasoning? That's recipe? our secret seasoning, yeah. We can't, we can't disclose all that, <laughs> but yes. Well, you can see how your shrimp is starting to turn. They're starting to get that opaque white look. Yeah, what is this sauce? This is another little secret that we use. Secret sauce. We call it a Cajun cream sauce. Oh my gosh, look at it bubbling right now. It's so good. <laughs> The whole thing. Oh, the whole, whole thing. thing. Oh, yeah. All we right. like to eat down here in the South, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my kind of place. And so that's shrimp and grits. That was actually like pretty easy. Well, it's gorgeous, and I cannot wait to taste it. Thanks a lot for showing us, yeah, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, buddy, I think it's time. Ah, my mouth is watering. I feel like the sauce in and of itself is a meal. When you get the grit in there with the, with the extra combination of the peppers and the onions and everything else, then it gets to be really bold. Yeah, so I try and get a little bit of everything. Mmm. There is a lot of flavors happening. I love the spice at the end too. I haven't had like a seafoody spicy grit before. You know, with grits, you don't get that normal like crunch to it. They're full of cheese and full of spice. So, I mean, it's just really robust and just a really awesome meal. It's yeah. One of my favorites, I mean, no question about it. This is the best shrimp and grits I've ever had in my life. I've always been intimidated by cooking grits because I didn't know what to do with them. But now that I understand the fundamentals, well, I feel like it could be really fun. And to they're have. not just for breakfast anymore. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Sometimes you order shrimp and you're hungry afterwards, you know, because you get like three <laughs> shrimp. You won't be hungry after this. <laughs> right, exactly. This will, you will not be hungry. <laughs> that is so good. Growing up here and knowing all the locals, I mean, that's one of the big things that really pushed us to do the restaurant was the support that we got from the community. You know, there, there's a lot of good things that come with a small town is, you know, just knowing everybody and knowing what relationships are out there to be had. I mean, it's just a lot of heritage here and what we eat. A lot of families around here still do gardens and a lot of people can. It's almost like stepping back in time a little bit if you want to, but if you don't want to, we still have the modernization for everything else. All right, so Steve and Mike from Pacific Seacraft are back today and we're starting the very first stages of installing our dinghy davits. How's it going, Steve? Good. So what's the goal for today? Today, I think we're just marking the bracket locations. Mike has a little bit of additional welding and fabrication. So today, just checking the position of the lower brackets. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> okay, cool. Will you open this lazarette up and just make sure there's nothing that's gonna be in the way of these through bolts? Thank you. Yeah, I think you should be clear here. So is that installed and finished? <laughs> Close? <clears throat> we'll use Gorilla Tape for the, for the final, yeah, right. final install. <laughs> All right, so today we are going to be starting the process of ordering our new head sails from Precision Sails. Now, you may remember that when we bought Atticus 2, the stay sail actually had a couple of holes in it. And then with our recent sail down from Maine, we started to kind of fray the luff of our Genoa. Although it's made out of really nice, kind of fancy, expensive material that is really great for racing and performance, it's designed to have the clue really, really low down to the deck, which means that we can't really see under it when we're sailing, which can be a little bit dangerous. But not only that, but it doesn't hold up very well in sunlight and in UV. And so for cruising in the tropics or for crossing the Pacific, it's just not the kind of material that we wanna have. So what we need to do is kind of transition our sails from more performance racing oriented sails to long distance cruising sails. So what we've got to do today is make a lot of different measurements so that the designers over at Precision Sails can design us a couple of awesome sails. Okay, is that taut? Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so it's 48 feet and and eight inches. So this is really a cool feature of ordering sales through Precision Sales is they've got these super easy to figure out measurement forms that you can 
put onto your phone. It's like a PDF that you can edit. And so you don't have to like write all this stuff down onto a piece of paper. You can just have this form on your phone. It's got really intuitive like images and pictures that show you exactly what each measurement is. And then you can go over and actually type in that measurement as you go. And then by the time you're done, you look around, you see you've got all the different measurements on the form. You're good to go. Measuring for your own sales can be kind of stressful because it's like if you screw up even a little bit, you're, you feel like you're going to totally ruin the whole process. This makes it feel really easy. And then another thing that makes this whole process feel so much better is if you're ever in doubt and you're not sure if you're doing it just right, Precision Sales suggests that you can just take a picture of like exactly what you measured and where and how and then you can just take a note of that and then they'll tell you like yeah that was perfect or you know what that's not what we were talking about but I can see you were just two inches off so don't worry about it. All right so now we got to put these on the ground. Put this on the ground? No the furlers. <laughs> I thought you were saying between us two we're gonna put this on the ground. <laughs> Yep, just pull it taut. You got this in Mexico, huh? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm just looking here and it says 66 pies. And I'm like, well, that's a weird tape measure. 66 PS. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like kicking measurements? You want 66 pies? All right, so next we, oh God, look at that. Dude, this is just boatyard life right there. It's like just going from the mud and the dirt back onto the boat. You just like, everything becomes such a dirty, muddy mess. Okay. All right, so the next step basically is we just need to measure the dimensions of the existing sails, shoot that information off to Precision Sails, and that should be everything they need. <laughs> Buddy, mm -hmm. this is the life. Yeah? Yeah. I'm working really hard right now. <laughs> yeah, I see that.